Hey, what's up everybody? This is going to be the third and final part of my video series on the kinetic molecular theory. If you'd like to watch part one and or part two of this series, feel free to click the corresponding links below. Okay, so in this part, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the velocity of gas particles. So we're going to talk about how fast those gas particles are traveling and we're going to see if we can't derive an expression that will tell us how fast those gas particles are traveling. So whenever you're talking about motion with chemistry or physics or anything like that, almost always the term kinetic energy is going to come up at some point because kinetic energy is the energy that an object has due to its motion. So something that's moving has kinetic energy. Something that isn't moving doesn't have kinetic energy. And for a gas particle, the kinetic energy is going to be related to both the mass of the particle and the velocity of the particle according to this equation right here where we have kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared. And remember that lowercase v is velocity not volume so let's, uh, let's not get confused there. Okay so we know uh, the relationship between kinetic energy, mass, and velocity of an individual particle. Now according to the kinetic molecular theory particles that have different masses, so you have some big particles, some little particles, particles of different masses are going to actually have the same average kinetic energy at a given temperature. And the only way for particles of different masses to have the same kinetic energy is for them to be traveling at different velocities. And it so happens that particles that are lighter travel faster than particles that are heavier. So lighter particles, smaller masses, are going to travel faster than those heavy particles with large masses. And so at this point, uh, it's useful to uh, introduce um, a term called the root mean square velocity. And the root mean square velocity is given the symbol U sub RMS. RMS obviously stands for root mean square. And it's basically a, a special type of average. And the reason why it's useful is because we can easily derive an expression for it uh, using things that are very measurable. So the root mean square velocity is equal to this expression right here where we have the square root of U squared bar. So that little bar looking thing, that line above U squared, that's, a, that's called a bar. So it's URMS equals the square root of U squared bar. Now let's talk about that U squared bar term for a second. The U squared bar term, that's going to be the average of the squares of the particle velocities. So I know that sounds very confusing. But uh, just think about it. We have a bunch of particles moving around, some of them faster than others. If we were to take all those particle speeds, assuming we could actually measure that, if we were to take all those particle speeds and square them, and then take the average of those squares, that is u squared bar. Okay, but unfortunately, u squared bar is a very difficult thing to measure, and so we're going to have to get another expression uh, that gets rid of that u squared bar term. Uh, we're going to have to derive another expression for the root mean square velocity to find out more about, again, how, on average, how fast are these particles moving around. And in order to do that, what we can do is we can uh, set up an equation uh, that equates uh, the average kinetic energy uh, to this uh, expression right here, which is one half n sub a m u squared bar. Now we already know what m and u squared bar is. m of course is the mass and then u squared bar like I said earlier that's the average of the squares of the particle velocities. That capital N sub a term that's going to be Avogadro's number. So remember back from the stoichiometry unit Avogadro's number is simply the number of particles in a mole. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles in a mole. So we have the average kinetic energy equal to one half times Avogadro's number times the mass times u squared bar. And uh, what we can do now is we can uh, set up another equation uh, that gives us another expression for average kinetic energy and then sort of equate those two terms. So remember uh, back from the first part of this video we talked about the different postulates of the kinetic molecular theory. The second of those postulates, postulate two, says that the uh, average kinetic energy is going to be proportional to, directly proportional, to the temperature in kelvins. So that means that as the temperature rises, the average kinetic energy will also rise. And the constant of proportionality that relates the average kinetic energy to the temperature is going to be 3 halves R. 
okay? Three halves R. Why three halves R? Well, unfortunately, I have to uh, admit that that three halves R term comes from a derivation that is uh, much more advanced than anything I'm trying to accomplish in this video. Um, maybe one day uh, in the distant future, if I ever start making uh, physical chemistry videos, um, we can talk about that. We can go through that derivation. I kind of forgot about it, so I'm going to have to hit the books again to, uh, to be able to derive that expression. But anyway, uh, that gives us this equation right here. Kinetic energy, average kinetic energy is going to be equal to 3 halves RT. So 3 halves R is that proportionality constant that relates temperature to average kinetic energy. Now the R, remember that's the ideal gas constant. But in this equation, R is going to take on a different value and it's going to take on different units. It's the same number, it's just represented in different it's the same value but it just is has a different number because it's represented by different units so the value for R in this equation is going to be 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin okay so 8.314 joules over moles times kelvins and so now what we can do is we can equate the right hand sides of both of these equations and we're going to get this equation down here where we have one half times Avogadro's number times the mass times u squared bar is equal to three halves RT and we can solve for that u squared bar term so if we solve for u squared bar what we're going to be doing is we're going to be we're going to get this expression right here where we have three halves RT divided by the rest of that junk on the left hand side of the equation one half times NA times M uh, the twos are going to cancel and we're going to get this expression over here which is 3RT over N sub A times M. Okay, So we know now that U squared bar, which again is the average of the squares of the particle velocities, is going to be equal to 3 times the ideal gas constant times the temperature in kelvins divided by the product of Avogadro's number and the mass. Okay, so that was a mouthful, but uh, we're certainly getting somewhere here. So again, this is what we have so far, the equation uh, that we just arrived. And uh, we can use this uh, to get the root mean square velocity, because remember, the root mean square velocity is simply the square root of u squared bar. And so if we take the square root of both sides of this equation, we're going to get that the square root of u squared bar, which by the way is equal to root mean square velocity, is simply going to be the square root of 3RT divided by n sub a times m. And notice that all of these terms uh, we can plug in because the temperature, that's easily measurable. Uh, the mass, that's easily measurable. Avogadro's number, that's a constant. And r is also a constant. And so all we have to do now is just basically plug those values in. Um, although uh, one thing that we can do with this equation is clean it up just a little bit. Uh, and what I mean by that is that that n a m term, n sub a times m, that's actually going to be equivalent to uh, this italicized m over here, which stands for the molar mass in kilograms per mole. So again, if you have the mass of an individual particle, you multiply that by Avogadro's number, well, that's going to give you the mass of a mole of particles, and it's going to be in kilograms per mole, not grams per mole. That's very important. And so we get this expression right here that we just uh, derived. The root mean square velocity is going to be equal to the square root of 3RT divided by the molar mass in kilograms per mole. So now we have a much more easily obtainable uh, situation here. We can measure these things quite easily uh, to figure out on average how fast those particles are moving. And so in the next slide we're going to do a problem where we do just that. So this problem says to calculate the root mean square velocity of nitrogen molecules at 50.00 degrees Celsius. So again we're going to use that equation, that expression for the root mean square velocity that we just derived, square root of 3RT over M, and we're going to figure out everything uh, that goes in there and then plug it in. Now the temperature uh, has to be in kelvins, it can't be in degrees Celsius, so we're going to have to add 273.15 to convert from degrees Celsius to kelvins, and that's going to give us 323.15 kelvins. 
The molar mass, we gotta figure that out, and that's easy. We can just look at the periodic table. The molar mass of nitrogen, remember nitrogen is diatomic, so it's gonna be two nitrogen atoms for every nitrogen molecule. Uh, that's gonna be 28.014 grams of N2 for every one mole of N2. But remember, that capital M on the denominator of that term there under the square root sign, that has to be represented in kilograms per mole. So we have to convert this from grams per mole to kilograms per mole. This is very easy because there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. A thousand grams is going to go on the bottom of the conversion factor. One kilogram is going to go up top. The gram terms are going to cancel and this is going to give us 0 0.028014 kilograms of nitrogen per mole of nitrogen. So we have the temperature in kelvins, we have the molar mass in kilograms per mole, and then uh, R uh, is just a constant, uh, and so now we're in a position where we can plug everything in and uh, we can get the value that we want. We can figure out the root mean square velocity. So again, it's going to be square root of 3RT over M, and that's going to be equal to this big thing right here. In the uh, numerator, we're going to have 3 times R, and again, it's the same R, but it's in different units, so it's going to be 8.314 joules over moles times kelvins. And then we can plug in that temperature in the numerator, that's 323.15 kelvins. And then of course in the denominator we have the molar mass of nitrogen in moles, which is 0 0.028014 kilograms per mole. Uh, and we can see here that kelvins are going to cancel out, moles are also going to cancel out. And then when we uh, stick everything that's under the square root sign into the calculator, uh, we're going to get this. Uh, we're going to get this expression right here, uh, which is that the root mean square velocity is going to be equal to the square root of this big number here, 2.877 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. And at this point, you might feel a little bit puzzled because we're trying to find a velocity here, but it doesn't seem like joule. If we take the square root of joules per kilogram, it doesn't seem like that's going to give us a velocity. Well, in order to understand how this is going to give us a velocity, um, we need to understand more about the joule. Again, a joule is a unit, it's the SI unit for energy, and the joule is actually a derived unit, so it's derived from other units. So the, the units from which the joule has been derived are the following. So we have one joule is equal to one kilogram times square meters divided by square seconds. And so if we substitute that longer version of the unit for the joule uh, into where it says J for joule, uh, then we can sort of understand why ultimately this is going to give us uh, a unit of velocity. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, the number is going to be the same. It's going to be 2.877 times 10 to the fifth. But then in place of that J, I've written kilograms times square meters divided by square seconds and then in the denominator of that whole thing we're going to have kilograms. So notice that the kilograms are going to cancel out and so finally we're going to have the square root of 2.877 times 10 to the fifth and the unit is going to be square meters over square seconds. So of course when we take the square root of that we're going to get meters per second which again that's a unit for velocity so it does kind of make sense you see. And finally, when we crunch this into the calculator, take the square root of the sucker, we're going to get 536.4 meters per second, which is really, really, really fast. So these nitrogen molecules are really, really moving fast uh, at 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, so uh, that is it. So that is uh, root mean square velocity. I uh, hope you have uh, either enjoyed uh, this kinetic molecular theory video series or if you haven't enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something from it, but I really hope that you both enjoyed it and learned something from it. Uh, but in any case, it was great doing it. Um, I enjoy making these videos, uh, so I guess I will see you next time.